Ever wonder why you can't lose weight? Even when you do everything right? Maybe you're trying too hard. Finally, here are the facts you need to melt the fat once and for all. It's frustrating, maddeningly frustrating. You've sworn that the, this time it's going to be different. You are meticulously counting your calories. You're following your exercise routine strictly. You're not cheating with binges. The numbers on the scale aren't budging, and the image you see in the mirror is so far from being beach ready that it's almost funny, if it weren't so depressing. In spite of heroic, almost superhuman effort, you're stuck in neutral. The pounds stubbornly cling, as does the fat, especially around your midsection, the area where you least want it. In desperation, you may be tempted to do what all too many people do, double and even triple your efforts. Crank up the exercise intensity, slash calories even further to the bone, and make sure your already bland menu is even more spartan and miserable. It may seem quite counterintuitive that redoubling your efforts may backfire, but that's what most people discover the hard way. When hard work, tons of sweat, and iron-like self-discipline are not showing the results that were promised, the reaction is usually a combination of depression, frustration, anger, and a decision to try even harder. But before you go from running a few miles every other day to training for a marathon and following some radical diets, the elimination diet, vegan, Atkins, paleo, gluten-free, Pritkin, master cleanse, the raw diet, fruitarian and Elizabeth diets, etc., save yourself the effort by remembering two simple words. Think about this. How in the world could you practically starve yourself and exercise until you drop and still not lose weight and fat? Why, why, why? To answer that, consider how your body reacts to a restricted calorie regime. Typically, after beginning a serious dietary effort, the pounds come off for the first few weeks. Some of this is fat, but the mirror doesn't reflect that due to the increased water retention that occurs when dieting. Then, seemingly without warning, the weight drops in spurts at times overnight. The explanation of this paradox is rather simple. When calorie restriction begins, the body retains water. As we lose more fat, we hold more water. When there is an increase in calorie intake, often due to a cheat day in which the dieter resumes a regular eating pattern, the pounds finally drop. This is due to the adrenal gland releasing cortisol, the so-called stress hormone as a response to the stress of a dramatic drop in calorie intake. Also, many people trying to lose weight exercise far longer than usual, which kicks in an even greater amount of cortisol release. In other words, too much stress, too quick. This sets the stage for the body to retain water in excess amounts. Now, when the refeeding day occurs, cortisol levels plummet, and the pounds finally drop. This is the logical scientific explanation for this strange phenomena. And it also tells us in plain language exactly why starvation diets and hours and hours of exercise don't immediately reward you with rapid weight loss. But there is one more piece to add to the puzzle, the role of sodium. To further elaborate, let's turn to professional athletes for whom cutting weight is a tool of the trade. Many athletes in the fitness world have become adept at manipulating the fluid balance in their bodies in particular competitive bodybuilders and combat athletes. Wrestlers, boxers, and mixed martial artists know how to take the weight off quickly and add it back even quicker. Bodybuilders need this ability to stand on the stage ripped, which is defined as having very low body fat to look larger and more muscular. Combat athletes need this knowledge to weigh in at the limit of the weight division they compete in.